make these fondants, I've made it really easy by getting these disposable pudding tins. I got them really inexpensively from eBay, I think it cost me about £5 for 50 but obviously you can buy them in smaller quantities and they're really good. But if you don't have disposable ones, then you can obviously just use small pudding tins. So what you need for this is about 9 or 10. And I say about 9 or 10 because it really depends on how much you fill these up. But if you fill them up quite a lot, then just bear in mind, firstly they rise and secondly um, they can take long to cook. So what we're going to do, I've got my melted butter here and really generously we're going to coat all of the inside. You really, really need to be really generous because if you're not, then they might not slip out easily and you're just going to have more trouble on the other end. So be really generous with this. I don't think anyone ever said there's too much butter in that. So I've gone all the way to the top and then just pour off the excess. So we're going to do that for all of them. So once you've gone through and you've buttered them really, really well, and if in doubt, butter them twice, just to make sure, we're going to put a load of cocoa in, and that's why I've got this down, to sort of save up on some of the cleanups. So just go all the way around and make sure that you really well coat the inside. And then what you're going to do is tap it into the next one and we'll do the same thing. So it's really well coated, we go around and we coat the next one. Now make sure that you do that for all of them and just tap out the excess. So you'll have some excess just left at the bottom. It's really important to just go through and to double check that all of these are completely coated at the bottom. And if they're not, just pour it in and just make sure. And sometimes you get clumps where the melted butter has kind of formed a cocoa ball and just tap that out because you don't need it. But obviously any extra cocoa can just be tapped out anyway. So just make sure that you've given it a really good coating because if you don't, you might struggle to, to get them out at the end. Okay, so these are all done now. So I'm just going to put them to one side and the next thing that we're going to do is melt the chocolate. So over a double boiler, which is just a bowl with a little bit of water in the bottom, I'm just going to turn down the heat. Now that it's come to temperature and that water is on a boil, it's going from a rolling boil. If I just turn it down now, I can just get it to a light simmer. I've got my dark chocolate in here, 200 grams, and I'm going to add 200 grams of butter that I've cubed. This will just melt together now. It shouldn't take too long, but just make sure that you keep stirring it. This is mostly melted now, so all I'm going to do is turn off the heat and just let the residual heat melt this last little bit of butter and now we can move on to the eggs. In here I've got four eggs, four whole eggs and four yolks as well and then in this I've got some demerara sugar and some caster sugar. It's mostly caster sugar, 150 grams, but I've got 50 grams of demerara sugar because it gives it this really rich caramelly kind of flavour and it's absolutely amazing so definitely worth doing. As an alternative, you could use soft brown sugar or something like that. This works really, really well. And we are going to mix this with an electric hand mixer until it gets to the ribbon stage. And that is going to take a good five minutes. much closer. This has gone really really pale and it's I can feel that there's a lot of air in it. 
So just another 30 seconds or so and I think we'll be done. Okay, so you can see here it's completely changed colour, texture and it's creating really nice thick ribbons as I drag it across the surface and that's really what you're looking for. So you need to keep going till you get to this point. You can do this by hand but it's really going to take you quite a long time so I would definitely recommend if you have a hand mixer to use one. Now I've got some flour here. This is sifted flour. So I have already sifted this. It's 200 grams and it's plain flour all purpose. So you don't need to add all of it, just add a little bit at a time and you can see that it's sinking into the mixture and that's ideal because we're going to mix it with the electric mixer and if it was sitting on the top it would just go everywhere. So we're just going to add the rest of it now. Just add it a little at a time so that it sinks in. and thick now so we're ready to add in the melted chocolate we're going to do that a little bit at a time and we're just going to stir it by hand this is the chocolate it's completely melted now it's really nice and glossy and to that I'm just going to add a little bit of vanilla I've just added half a tablespoon it's completely optional but it just adds an extra dimension I think so just added that and we're just mixing it around. So what you're going to do now is we're going to add the contents of the chocolate bowl into this bowl. We're just going to add it slowly, a little bit at a time. Make sure that you are folding it, you've just spent 10 minutes putting loads of air into it. You don't want to deflate it by just stirring around in a circle really quickly, so just fold the ingredients in until you've got a uniform colour all the way through. I feel like it's completely mixed, but the joy of a glass bowl is that you can see all the way around and just check to see if there are any really light parts. So I'm just going to have a look. And it looks, it looks pretty good all the way around. So now we are ready to put them into our little containers. And there are obviously a few ways of doing it. The way that I prefer to do it is to pour all of this into a jug with a spout and pour them in, or rather than spooning or using a ladle or something like that. I've got a one litre jug here and I'm just going to pour in half of the mixture and I find that the easiest way to get them all even is to add a little bit to each one and then go around and top them up because if you just sort of eyeball it then you can end up with lots of different ones, loads in the first ones and then you run out of mixture by the end so just pour it in.
that they're all of roughly the same height, I'm just going to go through, I'm going to distribute the rest of the mixture and I'm just going to try and make sure that when I eyeball it, they all look like they have about the same amount in them. Once you've got these in and you've pretty much filled them all the way, you need to make sure that you leave a centimetre to the top and you will notice that if you get more air in when you are whipping up the eggs then you're going to end up with more mixture basically at the end of it. If you have kind of skipped that stage or you didn't wait until you got to full ribbons you're going to end up with less mixture basically. So these need to go into the oven and it's quite delicate. They need to go in for between 10 and 15 minutes but you won't necessarily know until you pull it out and you try to serve it. So always make sure that you make at least one or two more than you're going to use what's great about these is that you can store them you can put them in the fridge you can make them a day ahead we're going to put these in the fridge now and they're going to need a good 20 minutes or so and they will cool right down and then i'm going to put them in the oven and i'm going to try it 12 minutes and we'll see what happens i might need to put them in for another two or three minutes because what will happen if you have undercooked these is they will rise and they will look nice and brown on the top and you will go to put them into a bowl or on a plate and it will completely disintegrate because the sides weren't thick enough you haven't cooked it long enough because with a chocolate fondant you are baking this but actually you're not baking it all the way through you want some of the middle to retain some of its gooiness so that when you cut into it it will really nicely just fall open and you get loads of sauce so put these in the fridge for at least 20 minutes if you're not going to bake them straight away just cover them and you can leave them in the fridge for a couple of days or you can pop them in the freezer for up to a month as long as you've covered them really well either with foil or with cling film so I'm going to put these aside, then I'll pop them in the oven and I will let you know what my first attempt looks like. It might be perfect and it might need another couple of minutes, but I will definitely show you either way. These have been out of the oven now for about two or three minutes. I do feel like they're cooked because when I touch it, it springs back a little bit, but if you can just see here, you can see that there's still some softness inside. So I'm just gonna turn this out. Fingers crossed. Perfect. Okay, so we're just gonna leave this for a minute and then we're gonna put ice cream on. We're gonna cut it open and we're going to pray pray that we haven't overcooked this. So, I have, through the magic of camera, got this sorted. So what we're going to do now, oh I can see it coming out, I'm going to cut it open so that you can see what it looks like inside. So that has actually turned out really well, happy with that. So it's a really, really amazing dessert. It's best served with either ice cream or cream because it goes really, really well. And you do need to serve this pretty much straight away. So as soon as it comes out of the oven, you want to be putting these onto plates. plate.